Welcome to Overlanding from Home. My name is Anton. I'm an avid overlander, lover of nature, and humanitarian by heart. The past while, I've always been interested in the outdoors, and I want to hear about other people's experiences and their rigs. Yes, the big rigs, the small rigs, everything they've done to design them and how they plan it. I hope you enjoy listening. Let's find out who today's guest is. Hello again, ladies and gentlemen, and it's been a while. Um, haven't done a podcast for a, for a few weeks, but I think everyone's been trying to uh, settle down with all the changes on the virus. And um, today, I'm I'm very excited. I have a very young couple that have been very active in exploration. Um, I would call it. It's been uh, quite. They're very thorough in what they've done. Their website is amazing. The photography is incredible. Um, it's called uh, Own Travella. And uh, um, I really, I'll put the links down below. You can follow them and, uh, and check them out. But um, they have quite a broad variety from, um, of, of uh, offering. The, some of it is technical when it comes to tires, bikes, um, first aid kits. But today, I want to introduce Olivia and Victor. Um, they're, in, they're a French couple. Um, so this will be a very slow, easygoing chat. Um, but thank you very much. I'm sorry I woke you up so early this morning to to do this chat, man. Thanks very much for getting out of bed. Hi, and um, Hi. hello, everybody. So, yes, we are Victor and Olivia from France. Yes. And uh, we are two young uh, travelers and founders of a publishing house. So, yeah, it's, it's Adventure Guidebooks uh, Publishing. And uh, we would like to share to everybody our passion for um, traveling and exploration. So I've, I've, I see here that you, on your website, for example, and I'm going to chop and change a little bit, but on your website, I see the, the two main areas are Ladakh and Kyrgyzstan. Is that correct? Yeah, it is. Exactly. It's, did, did I say Ladakh uh, correctly? Is that right? Yes, Ladakh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. So is Ladakh part of North India or is it its own country? I actually can't. Uh, I need to do a little bit more research and figure that one out. No, it's part of India. Ah, so very yeah. cool. It looks yeah, very, very, very beautiful. So yeah. did you guys uh, rent bikes um, and then travel through there? Is that correct? Yeah, it is. So I, I went uh, without Olivia this time with uh, two friends. Uh, uh, one was a photograph also, and we did a three weeks exploration uh, only by bike. We rent uh, in Le, it's the capital of uh, of Ladakh, and uh, yeah, it was a great exploration. Uh, we were um, average uh, four thousand um, meter um, altitude. Oh wow! So, yeah, landscape are amazing there. I, I'm just looking at some of the pictures that you posted up on your website, and I'm going to watch the little video that you put through, and uh, it just, it looks incredible, those valleys, I got goosebumps, those valleys look amazing to drive through, I mean, it must be quite something to take in. Yeah, you can find the highest worlds in the world there. <laughs> oh, you know, you when you say that to an overlander, it's a big deal, so I... Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm quite excited to uh, to to just uh, um, hear a little bit more. So, so um, obviously, you two have decided to put this uh, website um, together and create something that people can um, absorb into something that they want to do. And you've been very thorough in that. And I, um, I see you've put in here uh, from four by four rentals, buying a four by four. You've got first aid kits, the type of ties. It's very thorough. Um, did it take you guys long to figure out which is going to be right or wrong for when overlanding? Or um, I think we, we we have we had time to to think about it because we we have been tra traveling for a long time, but we only bought our car our own vehicle a year ago, so we've rented so many cars and you know we we have time to try and think about it so. Now we have a, a solid vision of what we want and what we don't want. <laughs> that's, that's really good. Um, I must admit, it's really good. And I'll, I'll tell you why, is that many, many people, Olivia, just, just build a vehicle from scratch. I had someone come to me about a year ago um, saying that 
they wanted to buy a vehicle, build it, and then leave immediately. And they've never done overlanding before. And it's, I said to them, no, don't wait, buy the vehicle now, start building it, understand what you're doing. And, and, and this is what you've done is you went out, um, obviously for work purposes, but in that you learned a lot about vehicles. So tell me about your vehicle now. Do you have a rooftop tent? Do you use a, um, a ground tent? What's your preference? Okay. okay. So... Um, yeah, we, we don't have a roof tent, for example, um, the, the, but it's something we want to do because it's a great luxury to have one. Um, so we, we have, uh, we, we bought um, Toyota, so it's um, a fuel uh, one uh, in Bishkek one year ago. Yes. And we, al when we also have a motorbike. Uh, so we travel a lot with the two vehicles, so the motorbike and the 4x4, and often it's uh, with a group of, um, of friends coming with us, and we try to explore uh, an area for two weeks with uh, friends coming, so uh, often it's uh, by five or six people, and then we come back to the capital, uh, our vacation are finished and we have new friends coming and we explore a new area uh, of Kyrgyzstan that was the exploration uh, of last summer and that's what we did for five months uh, last year, last summer. Five months, you, you don't have the responsibility like most of us do, so you're very lucky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, but so it, it, I, it looks like you've got uh, a Land Cruiser 80 series. Is that right? It is, yeah. Okay, it's a very, very good vehicle. It's uh, easy to repair. They hardly ever break. They, uh, they're actually very sought after vehicles, by the way. So don't sell it easily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Be before we rent a lot of uh, of Prado Toyota, and um, but. So this time we want something strong, and in Central Asia, uh, it's a uh, land cruiser. Of, uh, there is a lot of land cruiser, and it's easy for maintenance, so it's a good choice, I, I think. It, it, it is a very, very good choice. Uh, I, I know a bunch of people that have them, and they, they, they will never, ever get rid of them because they are they're comfortable. They do need, you know, obviously when you buy them secondhand, they do need a little of attention and repair. Um, yes. on basic, but it's not to the engine. It's normally body work like paneling and tire, you know, change tires and, and brakes and things like that. I mean, it's a, it's a great looking vehicle. So I'm going to ask you, it looks like you have all terrain tires on it. Is that correct? Yes. yes. Exactly. Okay. And did you go for, for the, the two eight fives or are you, uh, I see on your website, you focus on for overlanding. You focus on uh, um, 33 inch tires. Is that, that is, how did you come yeah, up with that? Yeah, it is. So I, I don't remember. We, we put this information on, on our website. I think it's, it's that, yeah. But we, we choose uh, mud tires because uh, we don't know uh, where we go. And it's better to keep uh, the 4x4 with, uh, with the best uh, tires uh, for the worst, uh, maybe, uh, <laughs> place Track. to go. Yeah, tracks. <laughs> Yeah. That's but it's 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 right, you know. Rather plan plan for the unexpected, and if uh, when you're off road, the difference in noise between an all terrain and a mud terrain is very very different. So I mean, sorry, sorry. Um, when you're on dirt road at, or off road, the noise difference between a mud and an all terrain yeah. is very similar. Sorry, that's what I meant to say. Um, yeah, yeah. So you know, having that 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 big extra choice of uh, mud and all terrain. It's it's it, it's quite interesting, and I'm I'm I was very surprised to see that you uh, that you said 33 inch tires. But I know that uh, um, uh, Blaze uh, from Mud and Dust he uses mud terrains and he he enjoys them. But he made a comment to me that he may want to change to all terrain tires, um, and it's it'll be very interesting to find out. But anyway, so so what did you kit out? And I'm going to ask. I'm, I'm going to ask you each the same question. What is the number one thing that you like, um, Olivia, or use the most within the vehicle? 
Um, <laughs> that's a good question. Um, I can ask uh, uh, Victor first if you want. <laughs> Give you some time to think about it. Yeah, I, I try to think about it, but for for us, the vehicle is just yeah. a way to to go uh, in remote place and. Um, we don't focus on on the vehicle, so we just focus to to discover uh, and. But the thing is, I think we yeah. we didn't have time to equip it properly. Yeah, it is also. So because we we bought it and one week after we had to leave already on sure. the tracks. <laughs> so we bought it with a, a roof rack and bull bar and and at least I think that's all the equipment we had. Yeah, we put new tires. On. New tires and that's all. We didn't really have time to think about the, the, um, the, the measurement. Equipment and stuff inside. The equipment inside, yeah. Okay. So, so I, now, now we are thinking about it and we would like to have a more comfortable vehicle because it was not really comfortable at this time. Yes. <laughs> but yes. it was okay for uh our aim to explore so yes i i can't really say which what which is my favorite um equipment inside the because there is car, yeah. no equipment yeah but we we used a lot our mobile phone to <laughs> to explore because we we needed it we needed it as a navigation system <laughs> yes yes yeah well, you know, let's let's get on to um, navigation. I think, like like everyone, everyone, you know, most people plan a little bit beforehand. I read a I read a post um, about two days ago on overlanding Africa, and the person was saying that they're planning in advance their daily drive. So, for example, if they're only going to drive into Africa in July next year, right now they're planning. On Monday they're driving this, and on Tuesday they're driving that, which is crazy, um, because I think anyone that overlands, like where you where you guys have been, you will never you will never stick to that plan. If you stop in a beautiful place or a mountain range, you, and you need the sunset to get the colours in your photography, then you know you I wouldn't care about it. So so how do you? The question is this: How do you generally plan your Trips. I mean, how do you what 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 do you start with? Google Maps, uh, Google Earth, um, I I Overlander. What's the what's your number one choice? Yeah, we we usually we, we usually don't have a plan, but now that we work <laughs> on the road, we need to have a, like some kind of plan. <laughs> so <laughs> um, yeah, we we love to improvise, you know. So we use just our feeling, or we we ask people, we just get advice from local people and uh, so now we are a little bit more organized and we we spot tracks on satellite uh, images that we find on uh, uh, application like fat map i don't know if you know about it yes 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 uh, yeah so it's very very useful we we spot the tracks and then we we try to to reach them by um, by uh, different ways we we, we 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 usually drive off the the road the main road, so yes, um, yeah, it's I think yes I, yeah um, it's it um what can I say um, I I t I completely understand what you're saying you know and it looks like the areas that you that you've been into allow that to happen it's it's very remote and i don't think it's very common i mean it's nothing like for example driving into africa it's you know there's a lot more people and a lot closer um distances in africa so you know um if you're driving in botswana they ask you don't go off the main road but uh, namibia too you know because you can get lost easily um and it's very different i don't think in uh, in the countries that you've been into, there's predators like like there are within like, Africa. You know, it's quite different. But I think maybe there 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 are less roads because some the tracks where we go are usually um, old um, USSR uh, roads. Okay, okay, the old so, Russian roads. Yeah. Yes, so you can find them on the maps. 
and uh, so you don't really you can't really lost your strategy sleep no no but that's sometimes, that's sometimes we have to to stop uh, our four by four and exploring by foot or yeah, for example by uh, horse horse riding with the nomadic people because it's a good way to explore the country in Kyrgyzstan and especially in Central Asia. So yeah, this is part of the of the exploration. When you can't go further with the four by four, you 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 rent horses and then you can go further. <laughs> That's, you know, that's such a lovely way to to just make a change in your mode of transport. You know, uh, being able to walk is one thing, but getting horses and a guide that knows, you know, certain regions and areas. And again, it's very remote. So, you know, going walking and the cloud comes in with rain, you get lost easily. It's a, with no cell phone signal. It's a it's a bit of a challenge and uh, it's 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 amazing. And I. Um, I want to That's ask you quick. We need to 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 learn the Russian. <laughs> well, you know, I I did a podcast with a Russian guy, and um, oh. he's got a same a Land Cruiser eighties actually, and he put um, forty two inch tires on. They actually tractor tires wow. on his vehicle. Okay. And um, and he he did the same thing. He uses another mapping system, a Russian based mapping system, um, and. Uh, they would look for a place and then go driving. Um, and, but around St. Petersburg, where they are, it's very swampland. So they would be driving and find tanks that, you know, sunken into the swamp and all sorts of different things that, you know, that were, I think that's amazing. I, to me, that, that history is, is hidden underground and being swallowed by water. Whereas for you, you know, it's a path and a road that was, that was driven maybe 10 times and it's left it's left tracks, you know, enough for you to go and look at, you know, it's great. <laughs> there was also um, Soviet military maps that's very funny to to have on the, its applica in application uh, and uh, you can see the old Soviet um, routes. So sometimes they are good, sometimes they are very bad, but it's <laughs> part of, uh, of the adventure. <laughs> Yeah, I, complete, I, I, I completely get that. So I want to ask you something that's very uh, appealing here. These, um, these hunting eagles in Kajikistan, are, yeah. is, with the Mongolese, is, this, is that their normal way of catching food or is it something that they just do as a, as a hobby? They, they used to do it just to catch food during the winter, but now it's more like uh, fol folklore. It's more folkloric. They, they they do it for the tourists in the summer. Okay. But they still hunt in the winter. But maybe ten of them in the in the whole country. Oh really? Is that all? So it's quite okay. So it's not very big at all. I mean, it looks incredible, and you and you see a photo, and it just, you know, it's just it's very appealing. Um, I must tell you that that. Your photography is incredible. The colors that you bring out, the depth in the in the story of the photo is is completely amazing. I mean, I, I it's it, if if any of my followers um, have not been, just go and look at the Instagram page before you go anywhere else and subscribe to them. I mean, they they're young adventurous, no responsibility, but they have, they have everything available to them in their photography and camera. Is incredible. What what camera are you using? We have a Sony A7 Air 3. Okay. Yeah. And, and and also um, a drone. Uh, so it's a Mavic Pro 2. And yeah, um, our book are, uh, are full of, of pictures because we want uh, sure. yeah, the reader to, to share and to show uh, the tracks, so it's a good way for represent our tracks and and giving the. Um, um, <laughs> I don't have the, the word in English, but yeah, yeah. The story, the story. I mean, it's it's. Okay. It, what do you use for your editing? Um, a Lightroom or a, or a, a Mac based? Lightroom. Lightroom. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. So. Tell me, I see there's camels and all sorts of stuff here. Did you eat camel on your way? Uh, did we eat camel? Okay, not yeah. No, no, no. no. I, I, no, they don't I eat, eat in Oman. 
Yes, yeah. I remember, but not in Uzbekistan, no. No, they don't eat it, but they eat the horses. Really? <laughs> they eat the horses? Yeah. 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 No way! But only during some special uh, occasion, like a wedding or... Yeah. Yeah. So, so they don't have like the goats. I see they had some sheep, but uh, um, goats and yeah, cattle and that. Of, they eat a lot of sheep, <laughs> meat. Maybe only this kind of meat uh, in a daily basis, on a daily basis. But, okay. Uh, yeah, sometimes horse meat. That's amazing. I mean, I've I've eaten a lot of different things. I ate a uh, camel in um, Somalia. Uh, in Mogadishu, and I, I I loved it. I went back three times. I had three I had three yeah. plates. It's great meat. Mm -hmm. Tell me, what did you do in um, Oman? What was the was it a similar type of uh, um, adventurous um, getting out and going and look? Yeah, it was same kind of travel. We rent a car, and we also traveled in the United Arab Emirates. And uh, we rent the car and we explored during, I think, three weeks. Yeah, two or three so, weeks. Yeah. But it, it was uh, uh, two or three years ago and that was for vacation. So now <laughs> it's a little bit different because yes. we explored to write a book. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Would you go back and do it again, you know, in order to uh, create a, a bigger book? Yeah, sure. <laughs> if it was <laughs> But you know, in Oman, there is already an, a book, yeah. uh, which is called uh, Oman of Road. Okay. And it's a very famous book, so we it would be difficult to to write one about the country because this one is really famous now. And it's complete. It's a very good one. So yeah. Very yeah. Good one. So we, we write some article on the website uh, about Oman yes. and also Emirates, and we give. Um, uh, our GPS uh, trace on the uh, on map. Okay. I don't know if you, you see some, and yeah, it's for me. It's one of the best country. I I didn't go to to Africa yet, uh, but Oman is one of the dream country for overlanding, and yeah, it's desert, uh, the sea, everything is nice. It's you're all on, and yeah, for two weeks trip, it's perfect. You can I, do all Oman. I do agree about Oman. I mean, I did a podcast with a guy from uh, um, Oman, and it's uh, he's you know he says the same thing. But that that whole region is very under you know in 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 comparison to Australia, North America, Africa, the Middle East is not very big when it comes to the overlanding side. You know, it's not really well advertised. And I and someone mm -hmm. with a little bit of experience, I, I would tell you, write a book anyway about the countries, even if there is this big book in Oman, because your twist and your wording on the book may give a very different perspective or a, another perspective to a reader. So I wouldn't, personally, I wouldn't care if there's another book. I would do it, I would do it anyway. <laughs> but, yeah. but it's your choice. I will, I will on Central Asia and uh, after that yeah we will uh, we will see where we will go <laughs> so Central Asia is obviously where you know where you guys are, are focusing on I mean what are your plans are you wanting to do one or two big trips a year or or just do it consecutively yeah, we, while you're on the road the thing is that in the winter you can't travel there because it's too it's too cold and mm. there are too too much uh, snow yes so we can only travel between May and October, November. It depends on the year. Okay. So we were we were supposed to travel there uh, this uh, this um, this summer? spring. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, due to the COVID uh, <laughs> epidemic, yeah. it was not possible. And we are in French. So we'll see. Maybe at the end of the summer. We we don't know. We are waiting for the the country to open. But now. The, the wave uh, of uh, COVID cases is going uh, worse and worse in the country. Yeah, it is becoming more of a challenge. Uh, and I, I think, you know, I think things are really going to start lightening up probably around February next year for yeah. international yeah. travel. Uh, I've, I've chatted to a few travel agents and uh, some of the local um, uh, big uh, safari lodges, and they, they only, they are taking bookings, but only from 
March and so onwards next year. So yeah, I, I do agree. It's uh, I don't think it's going to change anytime soon, unfortunately. Yeah. So our plan was to explore Tajikistan this time. Okay. Which is the, the country uh, in the south of Kyrgyzstan. And uh, and next year maybe Mongolia or we'll see. <laughs> oh yes, I was also uh, Saudi, uh, Saudi Arabia, Arabia yeah. um, also Jordan. Kazakhstan, we, we don't know. We just <laughs> focus uh, for now for Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan because uh, it's, uh, it's famous for his beautiful roots. And in Tajikistan, you have the Pamir woods, and it's famous for cycling also. A lot okay. of people go, uh, go cycling there, but it's also a dream for overland and explore. Maybe, you know what? I mean, Considering you can't go in winter, maybe you should uh, do it in winter and try, you know, that would be an amazing story because you can heat up your vehicle in different ways, you know, when you're sleeping in the tent and that. So it might not be bad. I mean, it might be worthwhile um, doing what others haven't done and uh, doing it in snow. Personally, I wouldn't. <laughs> I think it's way <laughs> too cold. I, I did a... Um, I did a podcast with a guy in Serbia and he said he camped in something like minus 32 degrees. It was, I mean, it's crazy, mm. but, but he camped in it and he was still alive to tell the story. But I think it's, uh, it's impossible, you know, because the, some of the roads are more, are higher than 4,000 meters. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's in, a mountain country. In Tajikistan, so <laughs> it's only snow, snow and snow. So maybe yeah. we, with horses, it could be possible, I think. The big problem is paths are closed, yeah, you know, all the paths are closed. so you are very limited uh, where you can go. So, but, but I think it's a for great... traveling just to have fun. Yeah, it would be possible. But to write a book, it would be complicated. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, you've you've clearly done all your research. So I went, I went. Uh, yeah, anyway, it's worthwhile. Uh, it's worthwhile that you've done it. I think it's amazing. So. On the horses' side, I mean, how much of the horse riding did you do? I mean, I think you said you were there for a few weeks. So, how many days did you did you go out horse riding for a, for then come back, or did you go only do uh, day trips? Mm, we did it one time for three days, but it was quite difficult, you know, because when you are not used to to ride a horse, you kind of suffer yes. from your ass. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I completely know. <laughs> So yeah, we usually do it like a uh, for a day or an afternoon, just to uh, yeah. When we when we meet the nomadic people, so we we just ask if it's yeah. possible to rent the horse or if they can uh, go with us. And usually it's quite uh, cheap. Yeah. How much approximately? Like um, in dollars, uh, maybe ten dollars a day. Yeah, ten something like that. Ten dollars a day yeah. is really not a lot of money. Yeah, maximum yeah. to rent a horse and with a guide. With a guide. Yeah. Wow. So, um, yeah. For ten dollars, I mean that's, geez, that's cheaper. Eh? I mean it's, and 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 these people live off the land. Obviously, they don't. Uh, there's no shops close by. There's no. Uh, you can't just pop into, uh, you know, into a little cafeteria and grab a, grab a, a packet of chips or something like that. No. How far is um? I mean, from the from when you leave uh, one of the cities, um, what is the distance between the remoteness and the city? And 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 what I mean is, in 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 Africa, I can leave a little village or a town, and it can be within fifteen kilometers. Um, I'm out of the you know out of the little village area. It could be one kilometer. I'm out of the village area, but then it could be. 200 kilometers, you know, between between places. Is it, is it similar like that in these places? Yeah, it's... So, um, in Kyrgyzstan, uh, you can just maybe 20 kilometers uh, out of the city. Uh, so, there is Bishkek, it's the capital, and maybe two and or three uh, average city, but it's only village and um, and people are nomadic. So, uh, yeah, in what? the in the valleys, you you find small villages where you can buy some some stuff, but very basic uh, stuff. Yeah. And then 
when you go in the mountains, you leave the valley. Uh, maybe after twenty kilometers, you you are in the in the wild. Uh, so, space. Olivia, when you say very basic, what is very basic? I mean, I I, I can I can think what it what it is for me in my in, in the places that I've been to. But what is very basic there? I mean, bread, milk, water, salt, pasta, rice, oh, and that's all. <laughs> and maybe <laughs> chips or some some uh, biscuits, but. And 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 beer and vodka. They yeah, love also beer and vodka. Russian vodka. So yeah. <laughs> really? So beer, vodka, rice. Uh, um... Maybe it's easier to find beer and vodka than water. No. <laughs> wow. Well, you can survive on beer, to be honest, and and yeah. and rice and pasta. <laughs> so <laughs> I would, I don't I wouldn't argue <laughs> whether I want to do it every day. I don't know, but that's that's amazing. I mean. Do they do they do do they brew their own beer? For example, I'm sure some of them would be able to brew uh, some of their own uh, alcohol, right? Yeah, they have some beer. The, the famous one is Arpa. Yeah, this is a beer, but they have a, a local beverage. Uh, its name is uh, Kumiz. So it's uh, half it's fermented alcohol. milk. Yeah. Uh, so it may be five percent alcohol. But it's yeah very strong to to drink it, yeah, it's, so it's, it's local very, made. It's not very well. well they like it, but uh, we we didn't really like it. <laughs> it was very special. <laughs> you know, all these things are generally very local, and uh, in mm -hmm. in Africa, it's it's you know making or not not making brewing brewing beer has become quite popular. There's a um, uh, there's a lot of local, there's a big local uh, within Southern Africa brand, not, I wouldn't say brand, it's beers that they've been making, but um, what's happened in the last, in the, in the last few months is a lot of people have been making uh, pineapple beer. And oh. yeah, you take two pineapples, you chop them up with the skins, everything, you put it in nine liters of water. Um, you put two handfuls of raisins in and the raisins create more alcohol and then you put a packet of yeast in, a little packet of yeast and you stir it. And um, you leave it for like two weeks and then you stir it and you taste and the the raisins have a lot of alcohol in it, which I didn't know. And you, I would sit there having a braai, a braai is a barbecue for us, um, eating the raisins and drinking the pineapple beer and it, it was pretty good. I must admit there was... Uh, the one day it was the perfect time. I, I, um, I had two cups of the beer and I had to sit down. It was, uh, it was pretty, it was pretty strong. So, I, I, I don't know what the alcohol was, but it's worthwhile if you want to make. Yeah, that looks better than uh, the the one of Kyrgyzstan because the the thing is when you're invaded in in the yurt, um, you you have. To, to drink one cup of kumis, the, this local uh, drink. So just for respect. Uh, yeah, for uh, respecting the, the people, it's, you know, uh, they so offer you the, the cup and it, you it's, don't really have choice. It's time one of uh, the groups uh, try it. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> did, you, did you drink it all or did you just have a sip and say thank you? No, we, we they, they can't leave you until you don't drink it totally yeah you know, they, they wow. insist a lot they are very proud of of this of this yeah. uh, <laughs> i think that's i think that's very cool but I, I i completely understand that it can be challenging for for some people i mean i've i've eaten I, i've been in some places in africa where i actually never asked what it was that i that i ate or drank because i didn't want to know um, I would just drink it and eat it and say thank you and move on. And I've been in some villages where, you know, in, uh, in Botswana region and uh, Namibia, there's a, um, a worm called the Mopani worm. And it's quite big. It's like the size of your thumb. And it's got this big black beak that it uses to chew through the bark of the tree. And some people love eating it live. And some fry it in garlic, uh, garlic uh, butter. Um, yeah. But it's it's very challenging when it's live and it's worming around and you're holding the beak and they're looking at you with all excitement <laughs> and they're expecting you to eat it like that and it just squishes in your mouth. It's it's um, not not my not my proudest moments. I must admit. 
<laughs> Definitely not. Well, guys, listen, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. I mean, this is, uh, it's, it's amazing to, to see where you're going and what you want to do. I, I, I think it's, I think your young hearts are really driving an amazing way. Your website is very professional. Your photography is incredible. Um, your writing is superb. And I'm not saying that because we're talking and whatever, but anyone that goes onto your website, your book looks incredible. I'm, I'm going to look more into getting um, uh, both of the books. I love the regions that you've chosen. I think um, where you're going is definitely um, – Untouched, for example, you know, in comparison to North America and the other most common regions that, that are out there. And um, you're very informative, which is amazing. And, and I'm sorry about the lockdown. It's terrible. Uh, you know, getting, getting this information out is, is very creative and well done. It's, it's superb. And um, just thank you. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. We are very happy to share this. Uh... This passion for exploration with other people, you know, in in French, the term overlanding does not exist. Really? So we no, we, we never ha heard about it before, like two or three years ago. But we we already traveled like this 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 way, like uh, with um, being self reliant with our uh, our vehicle, traveling to remote areas, and so we didn't know, and we invented this term like intravela. <laughs> yes because, yeah just to it's for us it was the the term for overlanding okay, like, uh, okay. okay. Adventure and, yeah. i was i was going to say what you know what do you use do you just say travel by road or you know by vehicle on dirt road but i think um yeah, there is no there is no word actually maybe English. maybe we say road trip but yeah, it's trip, not it's but, not uh, that so yeah, it's not the same kind of travel wow that's interesting yeah. Yeah. Yeah, very interesting. Well, listen, thank you very much and uh, have a blessed day. Stay safe in, uh, in, in, in your, on your little coastal, uh, coastal town in south of France and, um, and have a blessed day further. I'm really looking forward to following thank your you. trips in the future. I hope you get out sooner than, mm -hmm. than um, expected. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks, Anton. It's the first time we, we did um, an English uh, <laughs> so. yeah, interview. So it is good exercise for us yeah <laughs> sorry for the english so, sorry for everybody for english but we we yeah, try to nice. do our best there is nothing sorry to be about you did really well i'm sorry that my french is dismal uh, or doesn't <laughs> exist i mean it's uh, if i could speak some french we would be doing it in, in french i assure you but your english is fine there's nothing wrong with it you've done well it's been fantastic i've really enjoyed it and like everything i've learned something i want to ask you I want to ask you quickly, and, and either of you can answer this. What was, what is the best and the worst experience that you guys have had while being out in the open? Yeah, I think the worst was um, an experience in Oman. Um, we we got stuck stuck. Maybe you can you can tell it better than me. So. Sorry. Yeah, in Oman, there is a lot of uh, wadi. It's a river that can be, canyon. it's like canyon, yeah. Yes. But it's not, not recommended to, to stay near uh, this place because if um, it's raining, it can fool uh, the canyon very quickly. So it can be dangerous. And each year, I think there is death uh, because of dead people because of, of this. And so we went there. Um, during the night, so never drive. <laughs> it's um, by night. Yeah, it's yeah, something. We, we made all the the beginners' mistake. You know, we, we were yeah. driving at night, and we were not paying attention to the to the map. So yeah, we got stuck in the in the wadi, yeah. uh, and with a flat uh, tire. Oh. So it was impossible to move because the road was very narrow and many sharp uh, rocks. Wow. So we had to we had to wait for the sunrise. But so. we, we, we we couldn't sleep because we just <laughs> hoped that the rain will not come. <laughs> so <laughs> there, there, are, there are no rain, so we are lucky. <laughs> but uh, yeah, at sunrise, it took maybe two hours for just a simple uh, U-turn 
and and after checking um, our itinerary, uh, we see that we were on pedestrian tracks, not a not a road. So <laughs> we went wrong, uh, and we didn't uh, read the the map. Uh, yeah. <laughs> wow. The beginning of wow. uh, of overlanding forest. <laughs> yeah, maybe four years ago. <laughs> uh, you know what? And, and uh, that's uh, every. <laughs> I say this every time, but no good story ever starts off with when I went into the kitchen to boil the kettle uh, to boil the kettle to make a cup of tea. You know, it's a good story like this that you will never forget. You will always, no. you know, go back and go, okay, hang on, I'm not going to sleep in there because the same thing happens in uh, in uh, Namibia, for example. The only way to get around in certain areas is to drive in the riverbed. So some people yeah. go and stay and camp in the riverbed and the same thing happens. The rains come from Angola. The next thing you know, it's uh, floods down in certain areas and you just get completely caught. So you're not the only ones. Don't feel ashamed or embarrassed. <laughs> it happens a lot more than what people would like to tell. Um, so I completely get that. So I know this is going to be a difficult one, but what is your best experience, you know, that really hits home to you? What, what, what hit your heart? Um, somewhere along the roads uh, th that you can share with me? I think the best experience for me and maybe for Victor was uh, um, um, someone we, meet, we met on the road, like in Kyrgyzstan. Um, we were like in the mountains, in a big valley of high altitude. So it looks like just a... Maybe the image that you have of Mongolia, it's like, it's a big, big valley. Yes. But it looks like a, a step. There, there's nothing, no trees, no vegetation, only a small grass and the big mountains around. And so we were there just before the, the night and it was very, very cold, like maybe two, three degrees already. Mm, okay. Uh, just before the night. And we didn't find any place to camp without wind because it was all flat. And we were just close to the the border with China. Ah. So it was very imp impressive place. <laughs> wow. And uh, we we found these people that they were like, um, how do you say that? Uh, um, it, no, uh, it's Sherpas, uh, no, oh. nomadic, like locals. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and so we went to 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 them to ask if we could uh, sleep close to their camp. <laughs> yeah, and they just they just naturally invited us to sleep with them. It was three men, and each of them had uh, one tent, so we slept with the oldest one. <laughs> it was it was an amazing experience because we we were uh free three of us and we slept with uh, with him in this little tent stuck like together yeah <laughs> yeah cuddling cuddling <laughs> near, the, near the fire near the fire he yeah. invited us for the, the night we ate with them we ate with them yeah we, yeah we... it was quite difficult to speak because uh no English, uh, a little bit Russian uh, and Kyrgyz. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. but we we, we had um, a lexic for Kyrgyz. Yeah, a small glossary. Yeah. So we we could speak a little bit, but yeah, with vodka and uh, yeah, <laughs> okay, it was yeah. It was okay. And we speak with a smile, and yeah. that yeah. was easy, easy, easy meets and and. It was so simple and so natural, but. And the place was amazing, so it was like uh, we were so lucky to find them and sleep with them. Uh, wow, I actually have a big smile on my face because I can just imagine, you know, <laughs> beer beer goes everywhere. I don't care where you are, beer works. And uh, um, being able to just, you know, communicate in such a simple way with happy people is just so pleasant. Um, mm. yeah. That's amazing. And that's, oh, I'm jealous. <laughs> and the day, the day after, so he... We, we went with them with their horses and we visit a little bit the valley. So it was a wow. one day, a perfect day. Wow, <laughs> that's incredible. Well, listen, thank you very much for sharing with me, guys. And uh, I really appreciate it. And I, uh, I'm i really hoping that all the listeners, whether you're in French or English or Russian or uh, Kajikistan, uh, I'm not sure what they speak, but 
please follow follow this amazing couple and uh, um, thank you very much again. Have a blessed day further. It's still early in the morning, so you've got the whole day ahead and uh, we will definitely, yeah. definitely keep in touch. Thanks very much. Uh, thank you. Anthony. Thank you. Go well, guys. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye. <laughs>